Hi, I'm Robert V.S. Reddick, and I'm glad that Waterstones is giving me a chance to talk a little about the origins of the Red Wolf Conspiracy. I got my first glimpse of this novel in a very dramatic place. It was Argentina, Peninsula Valdez, in 1993. I was uh, on this peninsula, which is the size of Connecticut and has about 400 inhabitants, for a number of days doing research, and I was walking along a sea cliff one morning and looking out into a fog bank and just had this strange image of a, of a huge ship careening towards me and towards the rocks at my feet. And of course I didn't know at the time that that ship would turn out to be the Chathrand and be inhabited by people like Thasha Ezek and Basil Path Kendall, and that they would be fighting for their lives, fighting to prevent a world war, but the seed of the story did grow out of that initial image. I've also come to realize that the Red Wolf Conspiracy is a sort of window into uh, a world I've been dreaming about my whole life. Uh, the bedtime stories Dad read me as a kid were science fiction. The first books I can remember picking up were fantasy, and it wasn't too long before the urge to tell stories of my own grew as strong as the urge to read and imagine. And so I began filling notebooks with ideas for an invented world. In those years, an advantage I had too, I think, was, strangely enough, growing up in Iowa, which is very flat and empty feeling, at least for a kid. A uh, great plain state with uh, nothing much written on it but row upon row of crops. Uh, so at least for me, it always felt that wherever I went from there was going to prove more exciting and more mysterious. I was lucky I did end up with years of travel and work and life abroad after I left Iowa. In Argentina, Colombia, other parts of Latin America, London, eventually India, I married a woman from India. And I kept writing fantasy through all those years. Uh, those notebooks went with me and just kept getting thicker. And so, as this world of Alifros evolved, it became for me a kind of kaleidoscope in which all these impressions and images and memories combined and came together in new forms. And also, the world of Alifros and this one are so similar in the kind of benighted state that they're in. They're both torn apart by war and sectarianism of all kinds and greed. And so going to Alifros has become for me a sort of uh, way to search for sense in, in this world with all its contradictions. The Red Wolf Conspiracy is a runaway journey across the world of Alifros and into the heart of this conflict that's remaking it. And what I came to realize in the process of writing these books is that the Chathrand, this monstrous ship, so old that no one recalls how she was built, so huge that, that she and she alone can make the attempt to cross the ruling sea, this dividing ocean that separates the northern world from the southern, that it was on her deck that I needed to stand in order to tell this story. Uh, beside those sailors and passengers and creatures and uh, feeling as they feel and as I feel in my own life that what you've set in motion has swept you away and made you into someone that you never foresaw yourself becoming. For that's what happens to these characters. They become new people and as I think about it now, the doomed characters are the ones who refuse to change, who deny what they're becoming or what they're destined to become, who can't change or won't. And I must say that it's been one of the great joys of writing this trilogy, that these characters I've come to love so much, I get to find out who they become, and also what sort of world they make by their choices.